Photographer Mike Kelminski of Waves talks with Susan West about moving to the island of surf, working as a brick mason here, and how a hobby turned into a profession. I'd come down on these camping trips, and then of course when it's, when it's time to leave, you know, you kind of see how nice it is when you're when you leave the area and you miss it, and you kind of, you know, subsequent trips the same reaction. I just thought, well. I'm just going to take this step and just load the car up and uh, see what happens. And my intent was maybe to get my feet wet, so to speak, for about six months. The more I did live here, the less I wanted to leave. I think I liked the lifestyle, you know, the isolation. I lived in uh, Lovey, Mid Lovey and Valton Midget, had a little cottage in Rodanthe. And two of my friends from Ocean City moved here in the, I guess that would have been the summer of... 67 and moved in with them and my surfing buddy at the time up in Delaware and Maryland was a guy named Louie Batchelor and then Louie and I found a, a trailer available for rent in Waves so we rented that from Luke Midget. Louie was a brick mason so that's how we made our money. Uh, I would mix his mortar and he would lay the block or the brick and uh, we worked when we needed the money. <laughs> the rest of the time we looked for Waves. Some of the cemeteries in the villages here, uh, with uh, cinder block walls around them, we, we built them. And so once the locals knew about Louis's skill as a mason, uh, you know, some of the families were calling him and said, oh, can you put this wall around our family plot? We got jobs with a building contractor, John Luke. He, he lived in Salvo and he had a crew. We started working with him. But uh, that crew had some of the local boys on it, uh, Jimmy Hooper and Larry Midget, a few okay. others. And uh, that kind of got me mixed in with the, the locals a little bit. Because it was coming here from the outside, it was a little difficult to uh, get accepted. Photography was my hobby in high school. And I was kind of getting more into that. Um, you know, I, I saw this environment here and it really inspired me. When you moved here, did you bring a camera? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had a, an old Canon Flex that my dad bought probably back in the 50s. So, you know, I was using that. My dad wasn't taking pictures much anymore, so he let me use the camera. I'd shoot slides and uh, send it off uh, to get developed. I remember waiting for it to come back, and I'm always excited to, to look at it. It's almost like a kid in a candy store scenario. You know, you put these things up to a light and look at the you know, the colors and, and the composition. But I, yeah, once I lived here, uh, the place was starting to eat me up as far as the inspiration. You know, my photography just kind of snowballed. Do you remember the first time you sold some of your art? Yeah, uh, probably through uh, some friends. Would You know, I mean, I, I did slideshows, either at people's homes uh, one time I did a, a slide presentation at the community building for the uh, some of the, a local homemakers extension group. Okay. They really enjoyed it. And of course, the lights were off while, as, as I'm doing this, and I'm flipping slides up, and then I ended the, the show with a nice sunset. And uh, lo and behold, these people have been passing a hat and putting money in it for me. I don't remember how much it was, wow. but it was, you know, it was greatly appreciated. and. And I, and I saw how people appreciated what I was doing.